Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm Larry Wydell, and let's get started. I am with Adam Wydell, and we're talking about staying on the attack when pursuing greatness. You don't have to have a hundred; you just have a have to have a few that keep you on track. And the second one we're going to talk about is adopting a growth mindset. And it's the whole idea of anything is possible through willpower by focusing on your growth, almost anything. And uh, by, you know, you stay on track, you focus on your growth, and you'll amaze yourself with what you're capable of by staying on track and focusing on your constant step by step uh, activity, the kind of activity that produces improvement, not just doing things. It's like they say about practice. It's not just practice makes perfect. It's perfect practice. It's like not just exercise, clinical exercise, the kind of exercise that's focusing on giving you growth in the areas you need the most growth. And, uh, you know, we've got all of the uh, brains, the world, the great psychologists and uh, leading researchers on motivation. One of them is uh, Carol Dweck. And, you know, big selling book. It seems like it's big news to people that one of the things that drives a human being is growth mindsets and fixed mindsets. If you have a fixed mindset, you don't think anything's going to change no matter how hard you work. But if you've got a growth mindset, you know, if you take kids in school, that are dumb in mathematics at the beginning of the year and you let them know how much they can improve and that's a possibility and you get them believing and seeing examples of they can learn this stuff. It's not impossible. It's just a matter of unraveling it step by step. All of a sudden, those grades and those classes go from Fs to As on an average and they've proved this time and time again. And the... Growth mindset is where you thrive on challenge. You get a perspective where failure is just another pathway to success and achieving greatness. It's kind of like shows you where the weak area is so you can attack that and increase your odds of winning. And when you've got the growth mindset, uh, you're focusing on making progress towards your goal. You're always improving. Uh, hopefully, we'll get into that a little later. But, Adam, when we talk about having the growth mindset, uh, a lot of people, they go to the gym year after year and never make any changes. Uh you see that in business. You see that in sports. You see that in all areas. What? Uh, what about the? What, when I say when I talk about all this stuff, what jumps into your mind? Well, when you're focusing on these goals we were talking about, you said, you know, you need to pick one or two things to focus on. The main problem. I've seen time and time again with people that go to the gym that are trying to get in shape are this. They focus on what they get done at the gym or how long they were in the gym or how much weight they lifted in the gym. And the reason no changes ever take place with their body is because they're focusing on the wrong thing. Your food and your nutrition is 85% of getting your body to the place you want it to be, whether it's super duper lean, where it's just uh, in very good shape, whether it's putting on muscle, you do have, you do need to go to the gym. You do need to do your exercise, but if you're putting all your energy there and eating whatever you want, not eating enough, not paying any attention to your diet, those, that's the reason you're never going to change. You can't expect to make great changes without changing your diet, without changing what you put in your body. So you want to, your body to do, make these great changes, but you're focused on the wrong things. It would be like someone telling you that, hey, look at me. Uh, I hammered a thousand nails today. 
but they never built a house. The reason is they focused on hammering nails and never grabbed another board. They hammered a thousand nails with the same board and never grabbed another board, another piece of plywood. So they stayed focused on the wrong things and never actually got anything done, which is the biggest uh, handicap of a lot of people on their goals is focusing on the wrong things. Like you were talking about earlier, focus on a couple things, but make sure you're focused on the right couple things or you'll be wasting your time. That's a great example. Did you just think of that? I've used that example hundreds of times with people. Oh, have you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> people need to know that uh, I don't give you any warning. Uh, I want to get your spontaneous reaction to these kind of things. I get myself organized on it, but then I throw it at you and just to see what will splash out of your head on. But here's what I would say about the food and the nutrition uh, in you know, what those mean and relate to other areas uh, of life is people don't think about their environment. They might have a great achievement. They might be doing the things they need to do, but then their environment is totally negative, drags them back down. You know, so they, they've been moving up mentally. They've been learning things. They've been improving. They're getting sharper. sharper. They're getting busy. But then they go back into their office or into their family or into their personal life and they get drugged right back down and their support. Sometimes you got crappy staff. You know, in our uh, office, we have a standard. We want a trophy staff. I don't have a star staff to make our team. You got to be you got to be a trophy uh, person. I mean, you got to be a person that can win championships doing your job. And there's some pride about that, identifying like that. But if you have a dumbbell who's giving you advice, you have a dumbbell that's uh, running errands for you. And, you know, you, you, no matter how efficient and you improve yourself, you know, you're going to get drug right back down. So focus on growth, be aggressive and uh, uh, make sure you've got everything around you because it's all connected. Any, any last thought on that, Adam? Uh, yeah, I just think one more time, focusing on the wrong things, like what you said, and getting off track that negative attitude, that is devastating to be going after something and surrounding yourself with people that are, like you mentioned, dragging you down, putting negative thoughts in your mind. I'll give you an example. Uh, I'm always trying to get stronger in the gym. I'm always trying to uh, increase my weight higher and higher for that one rep max a lot of times. And one thing I've always done, and I've done this for years, ever since social media came out, there are a few different pages on social media that post nothing but people uh, failing or getting hurt at attempts at heavy lifts or not being able to get it up. And occasionally somebody will be like, hey, did you see this on uh, this one? They didn't, they didn't this, or they hurt themselves squatting. I'm like, and they put their phone up. I'm like, hey, I'm like, yeah, I'm always like almost rude. Get that crap out of my face. I don't want to see anybody missing an attempt. I don't want to see anybody getting hurt lifting weights. I don't want to see anything where somebody tried something and didn't make it or, like I said, got hurt again because I do not want my mind knowing that getting hurt or failing at a heavyweight lift is an option for it. So I don't even want that thought. I don't want those images in my head. I refuse to look at them under all circumstances. I get super aggravated if anyone tries to show me that because I don't want any kind of negative thought in my mind because all I got to do is see one person getting hurt squatting a heavy weight one time and every time I get under heavy weight that's immediately what I'm going to start thinking about to put that little fear in yourself so it only takes one person or one thought to be around you to cripple you going forward for you know indefinitely if it's what not uh, a positive influence on where you want to go on your goals. And uh, we've we've covered it pretty well, but, you know, that's the whole thing of the mental game of if you're in a competition, that's why you see, like, pool players, uh, you know, they're, you know, you'll be at a big, important point, you know, and the guy's got to hit it in the corner pocket, and his buddy will go over there and, uh, uh, you know, the guy he's competing against, while the guy's lining the shot up, he'll go over there and uh, right, right a inch or a half inch away from the corner uh, on the bumper there. He'll like wipe 
act like he's wiping a bit a bit of trash off of it. But what he's really doing is trying to steer the guy's thinking <laughs> off of the center of the pocket over to that little thing. What's he knocking out of the way? What did he do over there? I mean, it's just like uh, uh, in the, one of the NBA championships. We never talk about this, but with Michael Jordan, uh, Carl Malone. Uh, he got fouled, and he was on the foul with Utah. This is Utah's first chance to win a championship. He was on the shooting a free throw, and his name was Carl Malone, the mailman. And Scotty Pippen walked by him and whispered as he walked by. He said, "The mailman don't deliver today." <laughs> Just put that little seed of doubt in there. And you got to protect yourself. There's just, uh, uh, you can't let that stuff get in. Good stuff, Adam. Thanks for listening to this episode of Million Dollar Mastermind with me, Larry Wydell. If I've helped you in any way, leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. For more information like this, listen to our other Million Dollar Mastermind episodes. And check out my Wydell Academy YouTube channel and visit us on WydellOnWinning.com. I'm the Million Dollar Mastermind, and until next time, go, go, go.